like a river I tented my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever of a week. We go through so many things in the course of a week. 
And God seemed fit to allow us to come together just to give him some praise. Just to give him some praise. All because of who he is. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are. One more time. Come on, give the Lord a praise, for he is worthy to be praised, for he's worthy to be praised. We give him praise for his goodness toward us. 
because he's a holy God. He's a righteous God. And he deserves praise. Come on, bless him one more time. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. You may be seated. We greet you in Jesus' name. We're glad to have you here today and to witness this sacred occasion because he's a holy God. Down through the years, men and women have committed their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we will witness three men that have committed their lives to Jesus. And their lives have been changed by the power of God. And because God has changed their lives, they have decided to commit their life to Jesus for the rest of their lives. To be in service for the Lord. And today you will witness us setting them aside in ordination for the work of ministry as ordained deacons of this church. And I want to celebrate Jesus with them. And as we move through this service today, I want you to prepare your hearts for what will take place in the next 30, 35 minutes of the presence of the Lord. Will you bow your heads with me for a moment? Lord, Crown us with your righteousness. Lord, be on our side. This is your house, so we know you're already here because your word says where two or three are gathered together in your name, you promise to be in the midst of us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you will do as a result of us waiting upon you and being of good courage and you promise to strengthen our hearts. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Thank you for these men that have committed their lives to you that you will crown them with your righteousness. You will give them your anointing and you will be with them for the rest of their lives. We give you praise for what will take place. We give you honor and the glory shall be yours. It is in Jesus' wonderful name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let me welcome you again to this service. And those of you that are with us on Zoom, we welcome you to this sacred occasion of ordaining a few men, a few good men, to the service and the office of deacon in this church. I want to welcome our presiding elder of the Midwest District in the person of our pastor, Lydia Thomas. There she is. Just give her a hand, everybody. Thank you for coming. We'll give you an opportunity to greet us at the conclusion of our message. I want to tell you how important it is for you to be here to witness this occasion. Now, you have to understand something about me. This robe I don't wear often, but I know how to praise God in a robe. I, I, I know how to raise my hand unto the Lord and give God glory. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, 
my soul cries out hallelujah do I have a witness out there that saved us that delivered us that healed us that set us free hallelujah and whom the son has set free somebody help me it's free it's free it's free indeed hallelujah so we're going to bless the Lord in here prepare you for what may happen here today that, that you know the devil thought he had some of these guys but the Lord had a bigger plan uh, and I realize that it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit said the Lord of all hallelujah So let me, let me get my composure back. Uh, watch yourself. Glory! Can, can we just praise the Lord for about 15 seconds? Give the Lord a praise, everybody! Come on! Come on, come on, come on! Come on, come on! Hey! Hallelujah! you but he protected us from the virus he kept us alive anybody out there glad to be alive somebody will say to give God pray hey glory hey glory hey not talking about he was a good boy he worked hard glad to testify of the goodness of Jesus I don't know about you but I'm, I've done the last 18 months I've done many funerals and when I looked upon the coffin I said thank you Lord for sparing my life thank you Lord and I know some of our loved ones went away, but we're glad to be in the land of the living. And every time I get a chance to praise him, you're not going to stop my praise. Hallelujah. Woo. I, I, I got to tell you that I, I work here every day. There's times I leave my office out there and just come in here and just worship the Lord because he spared my life. Most of all, he saved me. And I'm not talking about part-time being saved. I'm talking about every day saved. That the joy of the Lord is my strength. I just want to speak for a moment. topic that here it is thank you Jesus I'm clear in my assignment this morning and I did some studying and research about the office of the deacon 
But the Lord just gave me a very familiar portion of scripture. And here it goes. And I really don't have to open the Bible because I'm clear in my theology that 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. I want to preach for a few minutes on the new you. On the new you. I know that the Lord placed his spirit in you because the old you, uh-oh, the old us, so y'all won't think I'm just preaching to them. And then the rest of you that's not saved, I'm going to preach to you in a minute. But the, but the old us, we wouldn't be in a church on a Sunday unless someone invited us to an occasion like this. But the old us will be doing some things that's ungodly. But because one day we called upon the name of the Lord and the Lord heard our cry, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he heard my cry. Yeah. That the old me and the old you had stoppers in our ears. We had blinders on our eyes. But when we called upon the name of the Lord, he unstopped our ears. He took the blinders off of our eyes and we became a new creature in Christ Jesus. And we became a new us. And I want to talk about the new you today because when you're in Christ, you don't do the, thing, the same things you used to do. When you're in Christ, the old stuff goes away and a new person takes over your life and his name is Jesus. I want to celebrate that man named Jesus because he shed his blood for the remission of our sins. He, he went to the cross for us and he, he, was, he died for us. He was buried for us. But on the third day, he came out with all power in his hands. But I don't know about you, but I'm glad he came out of that tomb. Muhammad is still in tomb, but our Jesus lives forever. And I know he lives. Because he lives in me. There's an involuntary motion that comes over me sometimes. I could be walking down the street and my hand goes up and says, Thank you for saving me. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's the new me. And if you have not experienced that new you, I encourage you to get some of this. Because it is joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. And I want to make sure, those of you that are here, that, you know, I went to a Lutheran church the other day. And they, you know, I ain't hating on nobody. Uh, but, you know, I can't hang out in quiet churches. You know, I think everything that dead needs to be buried. But Jesus is a lively stone. I played football in high school, and when we scored touchdowns, and I scored a few of them myself, we danced, 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 danced. We celebrated and celebrated. And I want to tell you, when Jesus saved me, he changed my dance. He changed my celebration. I'm dancing for the Lord now. I'm celebrating because he saved my soul. He made me whole. Somebody say he picked me up. He turned me around feet on solid ground and I'm glad about it. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. And 
If you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Oh, your old behavior should be gone. And if you find your new, that, that, that old behavior coming back, you got to put it under the blood. There's power in the blood. I, I, I want to tell you that, uh, you know, it, it doesn't make you a, a perfect person, but it makes you a, a righteous person. Yeah, and the, the fruit of the Spirit describes that. But I want to tell you something that I want to I wanna concentrate on those of you that are saved right now. I want to talk about you that's not saved because you got a, you got a message in a minute. I want to talk about you that are saved, that the new you should do something different. You know, I, I was telling people, and this, this, this uh, pandemic has disturbed the church. People think that they can stay on Zoom and Facebook Live and YouTube and stay home and taking a shower right now while I'm preaching cooking their Sunday meal right now while I'm preaching. And they forgot to assemble themselves, but they forgot to read that scripture that says, in the last day, there's going to be a great falling away. And the falling away is happening right now while they're in the, while they cooking the Sunday morning. Uh, I, I, I'm not talking about somebody that's sick. I'm just talking about the healthy people that they're able to get on an airplane, but they're not able to come to the house of the Lord. Somebody talk to me this morning. I know what I'm talking about because people are making excuses saying, hey, we in a pandemic. You, you go everywhere else. You do everything else. You got to begin to assemble yourself so you won't be in the number of the great falling away. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Now, now, now what does that have to do with being in Christ, the new you? Well, the new you with in spite of what goes on, say, I'm coming to the Lord's house. The new you, instead of going to the crack house, is coming to the Lord. You know, I, I hung out at the liquor store for about, you know, about, about 18 years. I hung out at the liquor store. Right there in 87 in Loomis, I hung out at the liquor store. And for 18 years, I hung up at the liquor store you know, in 18 years, I never got a drink from the liquor store. And the owner of the liquor store said, sir, there's something different about you. You don't patronize me. I said, I'm on the up other side of you, the opposite side of you. And he said, what does that mean? I said, I'm trying to snatch people out of your store and introduce them to what I got. And what I have, you don't have to pay at the cash register. What I have was paid for on Calvary, that Jesus shed his blood for the remission of our sins. So he always asked me when I go there, what can I get for you? And one time I tested him, and I said to him, um, I want all the biggest bottles in, uh, in the store. And he said, son, get a box, get a box. Pastor won all the bigger bottles in the store. And he boxed them up for me, and I carried them out and brought them to church. And people thought I was passing out <laughs> vodka and gin. <laughs> but I came to preach about the ills of vodka and gin. You know, and some smart person that read one scripture in the Bible says, wine is good for the stomach's sake. And they came to say, Pastor, aren't you going to bless me after service? And I said, the devil is a liar. I came to preach against these spirits. When you are the new you, you instead of having those spirits, you begin to have the Holy Spirit that leads you and guides you to all truth. And one thing I know about the Holy Spirit, he doesn't leave me. He's right in me. Hallelujah. He walks with me. He talks with me. He lives in me. And how do I know it? Because I'm walking a new a walk. I'm talking a new talk. I'm living a new life. I'm a new creature. My old behavior has passed away. I don't dance. You know, people tell me, Pastor, you should learn how to step. And I say, I do. I know how to step. I'm stepping with the right thing now. 
I, I may not, I know, I, you know, come on back and all that other stuff y'all doing. I'm just raising my hand and saying, thank you for saving me. The new me, I, I, I know who I'm celebrating. I'm not on ex exhibition for you. I'm exhibiting what the Lord did for me. So I changed who I dance with. I changed what I drink. I changed what I, what, I, what I say. Let me just talk about this. There's no such thing that, that Harvey guy. What's his name? Steve. Yeah, yeah. I just want to know if you knew him. He, he, he said he can't be a preacher because he cussed too much. Well, let me just tell you, preachers don't cuss. Uh, uh, no, let me clean it up. Preachers shouldn't cuss. We should be blessing the Lord. So our, our language change. Now, if you see your preacher cussing, bring him to me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash his mouth out. You say I can't do that. I'm gonna tell him something too. Preacher was cussing in front of me the other day, and I said, "Oh, oh, oh, oh what y'all doing?" And they, I gotta see who's in the audience. They, they, they said, who invited that N-I-G-G-E-R? And I answered them back. I said, the Holy Ghost. And he told me that those words should not come out of your mouth. And don't tell me it slipped because what's in you, when you say, your language changed. I said, when you say, your language changed. I just got, I just lost a couple people. I said, when you save, your language change. You can't do the things that the world does. You got to live a holy life. So what happened is people are watching us. They don't read the Bible. They read you. They listen to you. And they're trying to see if you're going to slip up and stuff. Let me just tell you, uh, there was a guy by the name of Peter. Peter. Peter, Peter had a filthy mouth. Yeah, Peter, Peter used some choice words. And, and, and Jesus knew he was going to use those choice words. But then, on the day of Pentecost, uh, Peter was up in the upper room. And, and, and he experienced the power of the Holy Ghost. And when you experience the, the power of the Holy Ghost, change takes place in your life. People don't like to talk about the Holy Ghost. They, 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 they mile it down and say the Holy Spirit. He's the Holy Ghost. Uh, I can say the Holy Spirit too, but he's the Holy Ghost. And he lives in me. Uh, it ain't ghostly. It's just the Spirit of God that lives in me. When Peter was baptized with the Holy Ghost, he changed his language. And when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, your language changed. And if you're talking, if you're talking like the sailor, get off the ship talking, something's wrong. I done lost a couple of people right there. Oh, boy. How would it look if I started using bad words? You, you probably get up out of here and say, or you pull up your phone and say, let's put this on Facebook. Preacher cussing in the pulpit. No, you ain't going to hear me cussing. You're going to hear me blessing the name of the Lord. Because the new me, the new you should be blessing the Lord. So I'm almost finished. Here it is. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old stuff is over. Behold, all things have become new. I want to talk about these new men right here that we're getting ready to lay hands on. If I didn't know them, I wouldn't do this. The Bible says, know them that labor among you. I've heard their stories. I've heard their testimonies. I, 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 I've seen their families. And I witnessed the transformation that took place in their life. And I watched them. Yeah, I had to correct them, yes. But who, who's perfect in here? Okay, 
I, I feel a couple of you saying, he, 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 I'm perfect. He, he ain't talking about me. And I, I ain't going to throw my hand up and say, I'm perfect. You know? but, but, but no one is perfect but God. No one. And the last time I checked, you're not sitting on the right hand of him or the left side of him. But these men have committed their lives to the Lord. And they invited some of their family members here. And I don't have time for their family members to say anything, but they know they saw a change in their lives. Change in Maurice's life. He used to be aggravating. He used to, he used to come here thinking he know, knew everything. He, he learned a couple of scriptures trying to think that we can put us on, on, on the edge, but we knew Jesus for ourselves. Uh, and he realized that something different about this church. Yeah, and he just trips in and say, well, let me relax this stuff and begin to get involved with what's going on. And I said, bless the Lord. You know, he, he, he was a military guy. Yeah, military, they teach you how to cuss and get drunk. Uh-huh. I learned that from them. I'm glad I didn't go that way, but they went that way. But the Lord changed their lives. Yeah, it's an interesting thing about these men that God turned their lives around. You know, uh, let me just keep on moving real quick because I'm almost finished. Tommy, Tommy Jones right here, he came to us uh, after he finished the program. He was, he was in the program, but he, 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 I know some stuff about him I can't even say up here because his wife probably don't know about it. But thanks be unto God, it's under the blood. And when it's under the blood, you don't have to bring it up again. God transformed his life. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Stay in Christ, my brother. Oh, my God. And, and this other one right here, Porter Chambers. I met him. We picked him up from a homeless shelter. Picked him up from a homeless shelter, and he... He came and ate breakfast with me one day, and I said, what's your name? And he said, my name is Porter Chambers. And I worked in, in a high school, Crane High School, for years. And I said, well, there was a guy by the name of Porter, Mr. Chambers. And he said, that was my dad. And the next thing came out of my lips was, what are you doing here? <laughs> but I know the enemy will take you down and make a fool out of you. But he, he, he doesn't have any power over God. God can take you from the gutter most and sprinkle some blood over you and wash your sins away and make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I've watched these men cry out to the Lord. I've watched these men Change their lives. I watched these men turn their lives around for Jesus. And I feel comfortable today to set them apart as deacons of this church. The new you. This is the beginning of a day that you will look back in history saying, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. That my old behavior has passed away. I'm walking a new walk now. Talking a new talk now. I'm living a new life now. Y'all thought I forgot about you out there that's not saved. God has no respect of person. If he can take these. Can I get real with y'all right now? If he can take these former crackheads and change their lives around, you don't have nothing on God. He can turn your life around. I'm always asked, well, Pastor, how long you been clean? And I always answer them because I love that question I said, a long time. That's my answer, a long time. And, and they said, well, man, how long? I said, a long time. Man, I, it, it's, it's been long. I can't, I, I forgot how many years. I don't get deep. 
but I know that I was a sinner. Yeah, okay, let me be real with you. I, I didn't do crack. I, I didn't do uh, Boone's Farm apple wine. That's what I, you, you, tell, you can tell how old I am, right? <laughs> Yeah, I didn't do Ripple. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I didn't do Mad Dog 2020. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Shake and bake. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I didn't do that. Bro. I, I, was, I, I played football in high school. That's what they did. And, and when they drank, they offered me a little something, something. And I always turned it down, man. I'm all right. I, I'm high already. I, 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 I'm high already. I, I came to practice high. I, I, I came after the game high because... The Lord saved me. And I don't have to go to the, the store to buy nothing like this. I can just reach up and say, Lord, do it again. Thank you, Jesus. But I want to tell you, God has no respect to person. If he can change somebody like this, this is amazing. I can go down the line and talk about all those other deacons and stuff that's sitting right on the front row. That God changed their lives. And uh, they're new creatures in Christ Jesus. God has a change for those of you that are out there that don't know him in a personal way. And I just want to offer this salvation to you. And this is not about joining the church. It's about if you die right now, where are you going to go? I want you to go to the right place. You know, People tell me where to go all the time. Yeah, I, 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 I got, I, I learned to come back from them when they tell me where to go. And I start telling them, go to heaven. You know, they tell me to go to that other place, and I tell them, go to heaven. And they say, what's wrong with you? I said, because I want you to go to heaven, because that's the new me. The, new, the old me could have told them the other place to go, but no, the new me tells them to go to heaven. Because when they tell me to go to the other place, misery loves. Yeah, I ain't going to that other place. It's hot up there, and I'm hot with these lights shining on me right now. I want to extend an opportunity for those of you that are sitting here to turn your life over to Jesus. I, I, I don't have a heaven or hell to put you in, but I do know that heaven is real. One brother told me the other day, he said, man, if heaven ain't real, I want to bank on it because I don't want that other place. If, if everybody going there and, I, and by, per adventure, heaven is real. I'm going. I'm, I'm, I'm banking on heaven. I'm, <laughs> me too. But I don't have to bet. I know heaven is real because Jesus said so. I'm going to prepare a place for you, and if I go prepare a place, there you may be with me always. I want to make sure you get there. Tomorrow's not promised to none of us. Oops, today's not promise. We live in Chicago where guys don't know how to shoot straight. But I want to make sure if something ever happens to you, I want to make sure that we give you an opportunity to turn your life over to Jesus. A lot of churches don't extend the invitations like this. But it's not about membership in a building. It's membership in heaven. Once you turn your life over to Jesus, your name is inscribed in the Lamb's Book of Life. And today, he's calling you home. And I want to make sure that your life is wrapped up in Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. The new you is today. Bow your heads with me. And while your heads are bowed, this is a personal call for those of you that are out there and on Zoom. If you do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, this call is for you. It's not a call of membership. It's a call of fellowship, of you being connected into the body. 
And I want to tell you that today is your day that the Lord said, come on home. Get on the team. I'll wash your sins away. And I'll make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. And if you're sitting there today and you're on the fence, I want you to get on the right side of the fence and turn your life completely over to the Lord. I want you to just stand up and say, Pastor, pray for me this morning. And I'll do that just for you right now. Do I have anybody that is man enough, woman enough to say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to make sure that if I leave this place, leave this earth, I'm going to be with Jesus. Who are you, my brother? Who are you, my sister? Stand right now so I can pray for you. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Today is going to be a new day in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is calling for some good men and some good real women, too. Anybody else need to stand? Because I want to make sure that this is the new, the new day, the new you. And he's going to wash your sins away. Some people say you got to be baptized to be washed. That thief on the cross was never baptized. And, today, and, 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 and Jesus said, today shall thou be with me in paradise. It's about accepting Jesus. It's a pardon of your sins. And confessing the Lord Jesus. Is there anybody else that needs to stand and say, pray for me, Pastor? I want to I want I want to be on the right side of, of history. So if he comes for me, I'm ready to I, I'm going back with him. I ain't going to that other place. They say it ain't fun down there. Thank you for standing. Just bow your heads with me. And just repeat this small prayer after me. And before you repeat this prayer, just know this. Some years ago, I, I recited this prayer. And it changed my life. It redirected me. And I became a new creature in Christ Jesus. No, I, I wasn't all that I am today. But it was a gradual process that made me the man I am today. Because I confess the Lord. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord, thank you for giving me another chance to confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. Today, I'm confessing, Lord. You already know me. But you want to hear it from my mouth. Forgive me of all of my sins. And you know there's a lot of sins that I've committed. But today, I'm asking you to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. Lord Jesus, the scripture says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm calling on your name. Jesus, save me. Woo, hallelujah. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus. I need you in my life. And I believe you heard my cry. And today, I came in here one way. But I'm leaving out of here a saved man and woman. And today, heaven's rejoicing. This church is going to rejoice. Because some sinner came back to the Lord. Those of you that stand and say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Come on, open your mouth. Say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for making me whole. Those of you that heard this confession, I want those of you that are saved, rejoice with them right now. Come on, church. Give
Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. The chairman of our deacon board, can you stand? Can you share with me your intentions and who these men are? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise I'm Deacon Sheldon Edwards, and for some time we searched throughout the congregation looking for men and women to see who would serve with us as deacons. And we selected these young men right here. And these young men have been trained and they have been tested, and they said yes to the call of the Lord. And, um, so I'd like to present to you Brother Maurice Buford, Buford. You stand, you stand right here in front of me, right there. I'd like to present Brother Porter Chambers. I'd like to present Brother Tommy Jones. Gentlemen, as the chairman of the deacon presented you on this day to me, do you promise to strive to so live that you may honor Christ by your life? And do you promise in the presence of this congregation to accept the responsibilities of the office of deacons in this church. And to the best of your knowledge and the ability to discharge the duty of this office, if you do, say I do. My brothers, the deacon, the chairman of the deacon board said you were tested and you were found ready to operate in this office. We as a church want to lay hands on you today to set you apart. We could rehearse with them the duties of a deacon, but you know the duties of a deacon. When they become a deacon, they don't get a chance to know. But you know what the duties and responsibilities that come along with this office. We are ready to lay hands on you and commit you to the work of the Lord. Deacons, can you give them, bring those chairs over here? Can you turn around to the congregation? Let me talk to you, members of Progressive. Do you members of this church acknowledge those men as deacons in the church. Do you promise to encourage and pray for them in their office and to cooperate with them in fulfilling the mission of this church? If you do, will you indicate by saying, we do? Can you sit, my brothers? Can you scooch your chairs back a little bit? Can you join me as we get ready to lay hands on them? Join me.
the anointing of God will flow on them. This is not just an ordinary anointing. This is a sacred anointing that God will gift them and make them who they're going to be in ministry. Father, we thank you for Porter Chambers that you made a new creature in Christ Jesus. That old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. Ooh, Lord, shower down upon him. I pray for the anointing of God to flow from the crown of his head to the bottom of his feet. Oh, spirit of the living God, I pray, God, that the anointing from heaven will fall upon him, that he will experience the presence of the Lord like never before, that he will walk with you. He will serve you and be the man that you've been expecting him to be for the rest of his life.
his life. That he will be the father to his children. That he will be an example of the believer. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. God in heaven, we lift up Brother Maurice before you. God, we thank you that you have brought him to this moment. You have called him to this service. God, we ask that your anointing would rest upon him in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you would strengthen him for the service of the Lord. God, we pray that you would keep him in the name of Jesus. God, we ask, oh God, that even as he goes forth from this moment forward, that you would go before him in the name of Jesus. Give him what to do, how to do. Make him effective in service. Let him be profitable to the kingdom in the name of Jesus. God, bless everyone that is affiliated with him. In the name of Jesus, let him be an example of the believer. Indeed, in word, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for this commitment, oh God. We ask that you would seal him. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for what you have begun. We ask that you would complete this work in him, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And God, we will continue to say thank you. We will continue to praise you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. of the living God fall afresh on Tommy Jones spirit of the living God fall freshly upon him that he will remember this day that the anointing of God rest upon his life that Tommy Jones will experience the presence of the Lord that this day will be a new day that he would be that man of God that you've called all the way from high school that you transformed and you washed all of his sins away that he began to walk tall and walk straight forth as a true man of God. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Father, anoint him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Every fabric of his body, make him new. Make him fresh. Make him a vessel of honor that you snatched him from the claws of the enemy for such a time as this. Oh, God, I thank you for what you did in his life, how you transformed him into a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. And he will experience this day in a new way. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Anoint his wife.
Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hey, God, as she serves right on the side of her husband. Oh, God, let her be a praying wife. Oh, God, let her intercede for her husband, Lord Jesus. Hey, God, give her words of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the times where he needs encouragement. Oh, God, let her lay before you, oh, God, and when she do, let your presence overtake her. Oh, Lord, fill her with the Holy Ghost, and out of her belly let it flow rivers of living water. When her husband hear her speak, let it be your voice, Oh God, that he hears uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, let her begin to be that virtuous woman uh, that builds her house and support her husband in ministry. Uh, and Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, let her know she is not forgotten. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, God said, I'm also calling you. Uh, hey, God, let your see. Uh, let your anointing uh, fill her, oh God. Let your presence uh, overtake take her uh, in the name of Jesus uh, as she raised her children. Uh, oh Lord of a Monday, I say, even in the of a Monday, I say, uh, God said remind him uh, of his call. Remind him uh, that he's called by God. Remind him. Hey God, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and you delight in knowing his ways. Let her trust in you with all her heart and lean not to her own understanding. In all her ways, acknowledge you, oh God, you will direct this path. You will direct the on the on the how I see. You will direct their path. You will order their steps. Lord, I thank you for being her, being a praying woman. I thank you, oh God, that she fall madly in love with you. Hey God, and that she'll be able to build her house. Hey Lord, in the name of Jesus, and invite you in every aspect of their lives, Lord Jesus. And we thank you and we honor you and we glorify you in Jesus name amen your name used to be Porter Chamber Today, you will be known as Deacon Porter Chambers. Hallelujah, hallelujah. to be Tommy Jones, also known as Coach, but today you are Deacon Tommy Jones.
these guys have been COVID tested. So I feel safe to go back to the old way of embracing them. The Lord be with you. And the Lord will strengthen you. Congratulations on this elevation and the anointing of God upon your lives in Jesus' name. Come on, church, give them a hand. an act of certification. We present this sacred certificate of ordination to all three of you. I'm saving time right now. All three of you <laughs> as deacons of this church. Amen. Deacon Maurice Bufford. Deacon Porter Chambers. And Deacon Tommy Jones. For those of you Their new name is Deacon. Yes. Their new name. Yes. Can y'all practice that with me? What is it? Deacon. Say it one more time. Deacon. This is a sacred ordination. And I know family members. My sister still call me Tom, Tom. I let her get away with that. But their new name is Deacon. Can you celebrate with them right now as they take their seats? God bless you. Come on, celebrate with them. together in the ministry the Lord has worked for us to do as we expand God's kingdom for those visitors that don't know us uh, a block away the Lord has given us territory and we're building a new building uh, for the young people in the community and it's going up if you look in the parking lot they brought some of the equipment in the parking lot is going to be transported to that building. They're going to start knocking down walls because it's getting ready to happen. And these men will assist us in bringing souls into the kingdom and sharing. God has no respect of person. God, 
you, you are, you're gonna see brothers and sisters come from all over the place to participate in building God's, God's house on Elizabeth and 87th Street. Uh, thank you, family members, for coming. There's a, there's a small reception in the back, uh, and you can get your food to go. You don't have to sit around. We, uh, they, they're already making to-go plates for you if you would like to have some dinner. My favorite <laughs> is fried chicken. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know that we, we African-American people shouldn't be eating all that fried chicken. But when I'm laying in a box, I'm instructing them to put a smile on my face and make sure Brother Lester or whomever, or Sister Yvette. To her, y'all all be vegans. <laughs> Make sure some chicken is up at that repast. Amen. I got a couple announcements. A couple announcements. Uh, if you live in this ward, our alderman, Howard, Howard Brookings, is passing out smoke detectors on Thursday, February the 24th, at his office on 9011 South Ashland. If you need smoke detectors, smoke and carbonate carbon monoxide det detectors. They're free. Y'all pay for it anyway. Y'all taxes pay for this stuff. Y'all might, might as well go. I'm going to call them and say, reserve a box for my church. S since you're not running again, reserve a box for my church. I got y'all addresses, but you know, we, we'll hook it up. Amen. That, that's what we're supposed to do. But if you just want to go over there and get yours, those of you that live in the community, uh, because we don't want any fires occur without any alarms going off. Um, the other thing I, I, I want you to know that um, our legal counsel here from our church um, celebrated a birthday. And, uh, he, he's the chairman of the Chicago Transit Authority Board. <laughs> You'll be eating a piece of his birthday cake in the back. <laughs> it was a wonderful thing to buy some cake for you. Uh, he, he's, he's our legal counsel, and he doesn't charge us anything. <laughs> so I was, I was happy to buy you a cake. That's, that's my young, young, youngest brother, uh, Lester Barclay. So can you just crank up with just, uh, just a real quickie, happy birthday, come on. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's all you get, boy. <laughs> come on, sing with me so I can celebrate it so he can give us, continue, give us free legal counsel. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. to have my presiding elder here today. And she left her church to be with us today. She's going to give us final remarks and then we're going to play our benediction song and we'll shout. Let me just shout now. Come on. If you believe the Lord that God will give us these, if you believe that the Lord will give us the full payment. <laughs> Come on, everybody, give the Lord hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. He's going to do it. Woo. Glory. Every dollar, every penny, he's going to bring it to us. Come on, bless the Lord. Sit for a moment. 
uh, uh, let's see. Miss Chester, you here? Yes, Miss Chester, come quickly for a minute. Uh, I've made it my business to be here on this afternoon. Amen. What an honor to be here for this occasion. Amen. When um, our international presiding elder told me about the occasion, I thought it would be just such a privilege. I left my church a little early and I came to witness this just wonderful event. I'm not going to be before you long, but um, I was thinking about what a role the deacons play in a church. Uh, I was reading in the book of Acts about the first deacons when they took seven men and they prayed over them, separated them for the work of a deacon. And at the end, after they had laid hands on them, one of the things that they said is that after they laid hands on them, then the church or the kingdom experienced increase. And I thought about how, it, how important it is to have the right people in the right place. And when you have those right people in the right place, then the kingdom of God experiences increase. And I'm excited to see the increase that Progressive Beulah is going to experience because they have the right people in the right place. Amen. God bless you. Amen. As you move forward in doing the work of the Lord. And let me just say this. I celebrate women all the time. I'm a woman, and I celebrate women. I go to women's conferences and women's celebration and women's events. But I'm always excited, amen, when I see men that commit themselves to the work of the Lord. And in this day... In this day, we need more men that will stand up and commit themselves totally to the work of the Lord. Amen. So I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. Amen. With that being said, I'm going to do what I'm asked to do and pray the dismissal prayer. Amen. Amen. under the sound of our voice. God, we ask, oh God, 
that the angel of the Lord would encamp round about them. God, take us to our destination safely. And oh God, as we proceed through this week, God, we ask that you would go with us, oh God. Keep us inspired, oh God. Give us a heart to, to seek your face, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, bring us back at the appropriate time. In the name of Jesus, we pray your blessing over each one of your people. Bless our homes. Bless our families. Bless our finance. All that concerns us. In the mighty name of Jesus. So God, we thank you. We praise you. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 You can come and congratulate them right here. Ms. Chester, the table's here. You can get tested here. There's a reception in the back. There's food in the back. You can get some food. and yeah, You can come congratulate them.